Vloria, you were an odd one after I saw your initial less than noble approach to Kickstarter, but I was ready for anything. I don't know who to level the hammer at, however, simply because it's kind of a disaster area. Floria is a Japanese TTRPG about being the titular Floria, people who have been given extraordinary powers to cultivate and grow the world they inhabit. This world is overrun with magical herbs, which are infused with magic. The Floria are people who have ingested and let grow inside of them these herbs. But what's the actual game, the actual meat and potatoes? The game is no a 2d6 roll under system, using a pretty simple method to create characters typical of Japanese TTRPGs. Characters assign one of four core attributes, then record a heap of secondary ones. Select one of the three species, recording two skills and their ley lines. Select a job which grants two more skills and then your magic style, which grants you everything under it. Overall, there are options to choose from, but not many options. Curated would be a good description of most of them. But I mentioned ley lines. What are those, you may ask? Well, they're the selling point. The ley line grid is arguably the main aspect of the game, giving the characters an entire grid to work with in two place lines which indicate their magic as well as any herbs they find. The goal of this little puzzle is to create squares, triangles, and stars on a grid. From there, the character is done, but far from over. The main part of the game comes in from The Adventure, which has the Floria enter the woods and go on a series of quests to complete a goal. This may be find the missing person, but you have to find their bag, and then you have to find the trail as mini quests in pursuit of that main goal, all while under a timer. The entire time, the characters are picking up herbs and adding them to their ley line collection, in addition to performing other very regimented actions as required by the game. Each of these herbs are added to the ley line chart with their own set of requirements for legal and illegal placement of these lines on that chart. But what are these things actually for? Well, the climax. The Floria will have to use their magic in an effort to defeat a problem, affecting the forest. Each of each magical skill costing either a square, a triangle, a ribbon, or a star to perform the effect. When you use it, the character fills in their sheet to signify its use. However, when you take damage, you also fill in a specific square? As damage is based off the hit location intersection with various lines, so a square with three lines running through it would do three damage. Damage, but hitting an already filled square will deal even more damage to the character, which in turn begins to cripple options as damaged squares count as a wall when you're filling in things, so a triangle can become a square. The characters are consistently gathering these herbs to add to their grid, while adding them to the grid presents more options in combat, using those spells in combat also presents them more opportunity to get hurt, something the Floria have very little health, so every herb becomes a game of trying to organize them on this little sheet, which are always going to be randomized but have a series of requirements to be placed on the sheet properly. Overall, the issue is that the main gimmick has a lot of work put into it, to which engaging with it places the Floria at an odd disadvantageous position. It's a game where luck is more important than, cl than the clearly crafted puzzle in front of us, as the enemy may just roll well and destroy the entire puzzle with one meaty swing, knocking out a ribbon or a star which took you an hour to make. There's a lot of investment into something which doesn't work really pay off. Yes, it's a fun gimmick, but as tabletop role-playing goes, it's a bit odd. This was a board game, then fine, I didn't draw well, I got hit badly, we set it back up and I'm ready to go again. But this has a different flow to it. It's a few hours to result in sorry your character is KO'd because they rolled the same thing twice and I murked you in the second round of combat. But what's the initial bit? Leveling the hammer. Well, here are the assist rules. Seems pretty standard, except for one bit here. By doing so they may add their familiarity score to the result of the dice rolled by the PC they are aiding, which would make it harder to succeed as it's a roll under system based on an attribute, which you rarely is very high. And wait, fumbles have it so if you roll snake eyes it's an automatic failure, but it's also a roll under system. Doesn't that mean the results start getting more skewed to failure? Here's the problem, I don't trust the translation. The assist rules may be a minor gaffe, but it sowed the seeds deep in my mind that something could be 
off. Is it a roll under system? It says it is, but is that an error? Is familiarity worded wrong? Is there a reason ones are fumbles that we just don't see? All these little doubts come to my mind while reading it. Was I reading Floria or some botched translation of Floria? As translation work is built almost entirely off of the faith that the translator has created something accurate, which, pre which presents two very unique situations. Either the game designer doesn't know about basic probabilities or game design, and Floria by itself isn't very good, or the translator goofed, which calls into doubt every other section of the game. It's hard to tell. Floria is an oddity, one that is it would be a fun board game, but is unfortunately a tabletop role-playing game. A lot of work to grow what amounts to skunkweed. My name is Notepad Anon, and this was Floria, The Verdant Way. If you like what I do here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye.